Hey, what's poppin'? Tim Warner here. This is called Enthusiasm versus Performance, and I got the idea for this video from a YouTube commenter the other day who remarked, when I first started studying your training, I was not a fan. And I was really curious to know why. I want to see how I can improve and, and reach a wider audience in my teaching. So I asked the person to explain, and they said that when they first studied my training, they assumed my enthusiasm was a performance or a bit. But then when they watched my YouTube videos and saw that this is actually how I am, then they're cool. <laughs> and I appreciated that. If you're watching now, thanks a lot for your feedback. It's valuable. Because I'm the same way in terms of I have a low threshold of tolerance for performance, unless it, that's what the point is. I mean, if I go to a improv comedy show, I'm expecting a performance. I'm expecting over the top. But if I'm in a straight environment where I'm, you know, education or, you know, just a seminar, whatever it might be, and the person is very obviously hamming it up, I don't respond well to that. It's difficult for me to take them seriously and pay attention. And a good example of this is I've taken recently to listening to a lot of debates on YouTube and there's this one debate channel, I'm not going to mention what it is, but I enjoy it for the most part, but one of the moderators just is so saccharine and artificially over the top with, with their presentation, it turns me off, honestly, it really does. My, my remark to this person is, would you consider please being genuine and even, rather than this carnival barker thing, which really puts me off because of its inauthenticity? Now, to be totally candid, I've never really given too much of a thought to my own affect other than I strive to be genuine, and, and I assume that that comes through. I guess that's my problem. You know what they say about assumptions, whoever they are, that oftentimes they're not right. And in this case, I'm not right. That I guess my enthusiasm could be seen by some is inauthentic or performance. Now, I will say that like many successful public speakers, I am different on the stage versus off the stage, and I think that's there's nothing wrong with that at all. In other words, I'm much more reserved and low-key normally than I am when I'm presenting. I'm being much more verbose. As you can see, I, I like to gesture with my hands and my body. I, I try to be dynamic in my speech. Those are all good things. But what this commenter made me realize is just to double check that I'm being 100% enthusiastic and genuine, which I am. I really am. Any extra that comes on top of that here is just an outgrowth of the fact I'm doing what I love, as I've mentioned several times in this YouTube series. So if I were to turn this around into a lesson to fellow folks who are doing public speaking and presentations, it would be to invite you to do the same self-inventory and ask yourself some hard questions. If I'm not feeling it someday, am I intentionally hamming it up, and how might that affect my audience? How much genuine enthusiasm do you have? I mean, nobody has 100% energy every day. In fact, the last couple weeks for me have been horrendous. My energy has been bottom of the barrel. And because I work from home, the couch is constantly there calling my name to take a nap. It's been pretty unpleasant, to be honest with you. But I guess when I'm working, when I'm doing my teaching and presentation, I'm able to context shift into that mode and develop some enthusiasm. In fact, a fellow technical trainer gave me a suggestion a long time ago. I forgot who it was. Probably should think about that and give him credit. But one of my colleagues mentioned once that before he turns on the recorder to start his classes, he'll meditate for a couple minutes and he'll intentionally smile, like a real smile. And, you know, depending on the day, sometimes you have to kind of kickstart it to get it going. I believe that translates positively into my training to the point where I do that, even though at Pluralsight I'm not on cam, it's just my voice. 
I will still take a few seconds before I start the recorder, breathe, and work up a smile. How do I work up a smile? I think of something or someone that makes me happy. I think of something I'm grateful for. I'll tell you, one uh, being that will always bring a smile to my face is my corgi, Pickles. I think of him and think of him smiling because dogs are capable of some pretty gorgeous smiles. And I'm smiling now thinking of Pickles. So yeah, these things work. And the energy there, although I'm not a supernatural guy in any way, shape, or form, I do believe there is some something, some tangible shift that is transmitted in my voice and affect when I'm coming from a place of gratitude and at least thinking of positivity, smiling, et cetera, et cetera. It does make a difference. All right, let's see. Am I missing anything in this enthusiasm versus performance talk? I don't think so, other than it feels like these YouTube videos I've been recording over the last couple weeks recurse upon themselves because a lot of this stuff on enthusiasm versus performance ties directly to my thesis of finding your best fit professionally. In other words, if you're doing work that you really enjoy, it's a heck of a lot easier to be grateful. It's a heck of a lot easier to smile. And it's a heck of a lot easier to be, uh, to be more present and external <clears throat> when you're presenting. And what does that boil down to? In case you haven't seen those videos, my recipe that I believe in is an admixture of identifying genuine aptitude for such and so a subject matter. Doesn't have to be a huge amount, but some kernel of aptitude that'll help you going is keep you inspired. Two, time investment, because bottom line is you got to practice to get better at your craft. And third would be, let me see, I forgot it. There's aptitude interest. Sure, yeah. So there's, I'm good at this, or I have some kernel of ability in this. I'm genuinely interested in it. And those two things together normally form the critical momentum to keep at it, you see. I've uh, counseled people coming into IT who thought I wanted to be a programmer or a database developer, got them in, got them getting their hands dirty, and they realized after a time, hmm, you know something? I'm really just not feeling it. I may or may not have a lot of ap natural aptitude for this, but it really doesn't thrill me. It doesn't uh, delight me, to use a marketing buzzword. And therefore, how could you expect that they're going to have momentum over time putting in the effort to improve their skills? It doesn't make sense. You see what I mean? So those three elements, I think, are indispensable. If you've got those locked in, then you're primed and ready to be a next level presenter on that subject matter, because it seems to me you've got that natural enthusiasm. And if you let that natural enthusiasm reach your body, if you've ever heard that old expression, if you're happy, you might want to let your face know, you know, because if you're like flat affect. And honestly, with autism, it can be pretty easy for me to have a flat affect, even though I may be bursting with joy inside. That's another story. That's another th something to keep uh, aware of. But yeah, definitely letting that enthusiasm bubble up and inform your public speaking. And for me, it turns into what could be construed as performance. But I can go to bed at night satisfied and at peace with the notion that, with very little exception, all of my teaching is informed by genuine enthusiasm, and a performance aspect is just a natural animation of that enthusiasm. Hope that made some semblance of sense as usual. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time. Bye.